Very common theme among enthusiasts or just gamers in general is their dream about building their perfect PC build. They had perfect plans, perfect timing to make perfect machine with all the latest and greatest hardware, just to ensure everything runs smoothly in years to come. With quite obvious financial constraints, that dream remained unfulfilled for the great majority of us. PC we are building is one such dream, finally found its way to become a reality. When we put the fact that it's far a bit far too late aside, now we can check how powerful and how future-proof it really was. So, welcome to the very first video of Attic Tier Tech. Here you'll witness the making of our ultimate gaming PC build for year 2006. Let's start by introducing our components. For our motherboard, we have Asus Striker Extreme, one of the very first from Asus ROG lineup. It's using NVIDIA N4680i SLI chipset, has 1333 MHz bus speed. The details and the build quality are something to be revered even today, and it's motherboard equivalent of the race car. However, at pretty high retail price, it was never much of a deal. This isn't a motherboard you would use in a regular mid-tier build, and here we intend to use it at the time, specific use case. What do we mean by build from 2006? Let's clarify here that we're dealing with parts that are available to buy by the very end of the year. Most of our parts here were actually from tail end of 2006. We have two CPUs available for this occasion. First option is an early Intel's dual core powerhouse that is E6700, cores clocked at 2.66 GHz with 4 MB of L2 cache. This CPU was ready to tackle anything in year 2006. Our other option is initial pick for this build. Its rarity made me question would we be able to find it. Yet, in spite of everything, here it is. The CPU in question is QX6700, also 2.66 GHz, with total of 8 MB of L2 cache. If you don't encounter any problems with it, this is our CPU of choice. Why go dual core when you can jump straight into quad core? Some alternative might be X6800, and with better single core performance, it's definitely better at the get go. What we're counting on here is that our 4 cores might make our build more future-proof, and ultimately better today. For our memory, we'll be using fanciest memory of that era, Gale's Black Dragon series. It has painted dragons with red LEDs for eyes. Those are 2GB CL4 sticks, and we have 4 of them for grand total of 8MB of RAM, which would be somewhat passable amount even today. I can't be quite certain, but I think these are actually released in 2007. It doesn't make much of a difference though, as sticks with these specs were widely available in 2006. For CPU cooling, we'll use or try using this Intel replacement cooler from Cooler Master. Luckily it doesn't have clearance issues with VRM as it does on LGA 1150 motherboards. It doesn't look promising, but we tested with the E6700 and it performed just fine. For PSU, we already throw periodicity completely out of window. Finding air specific power supply that can fit our bill and is in good shape is thankless task, so we'll go with something reliable. For that we have here C-Sonic Core GC650. It might not be the best PSU in the world, but we still haven't found something that this PSU wasn't able to do for us. Further sacrificing of the TCT, here we have two SSDs, one for our system installation, another with games and benchmarks installed on it. We'll be trying to use solid state storage whenever we can, and while that might affect load times and data operations, it should make little to no difference overall. It's not performance, but stability we're after here, and that's something we just can't get with aging HDs. As for case, we will not be using one. My small handmade test bench will cover our needs. If we're to choose a case to put our build in, it would most likely be Antec 900. Back in the day I would probably pick something for Chief Tech Dragon line of cases. If you followed what was going on with PC hardware back in 2006, then you will not be surprised by our graphic card of choice. Nvidia GeForce 8800 GTX is quite an obvious choice, and we can't go wrong there, as it outclassed any other card back then. Predictably, we'll be using two of these monsters in SLI, at the time feature exclusive to our N4680 SLI chipset. With all parts ready, we should proceed with assembling this build.
Now that we have seemingly everything assembled, we can try turning it on. Cooler spinning, lights blinking, everything looks fine for now. And we have a post. There are some minor RAM issues that I'm gonna tackle off screen, but everything else seemed to work just fine. Also, I forgot to add the SLI bridge while building it. So, I'll add one now. We also had to do some changes to cooling afterwards. Initial cooler wasn't sufficient to cool off 130W QX6700, which is, as everything else, doubled to E6765 watts. So we needed something more meaty. For benchmarking we will be using Windows 7, and it hasn't really aged gracefully the last few years. We will start our benchmarks with GTA Vice City. Here we are heavily CPU bound. More precisely, one CPU core bound. Interestingly, we get slightly better results without SLI. Let's proceed with Crisis of its time, Far Cry. Here, we get amazing frame rates at all qualities and resolutions. With SLI, we get to up to 30% at higher resolutions and maximum details. Next is Fear, one of the best FPS games of all time. Results are still shockingly good. SLI gives us the same uptick as with Far Cry, up to 30%. With Oblivion we had quite some issues with the game, it probably comes down to driver issues. You can see problems with SLI results as well. We didn't try other driver versions, otherwise this video would take forever to finish. As with all results, take them with a grain of salt, especially one such as this. Even with wonky results, Oblivion works amazing on this setup. Here, we'll try our build against 2011 game Hard Reset. We don't get much from our SLI, but still, results are formidable, considering that this game came out 5 years later. To get comparable results, and figure out where is the limit for our graphics card choice, we have thrown in GTX 750 as a reference. But of course, question remains, can this thing run Crisis? Yep, it can. Not a 1080p and max present, as there it runs out of memory, a uh, video memory, but at lower resolution game runs somewhat smoothly with no noticeable stutter. With 2013 Tomb Raider, we couldn't make our SLI setup work in any shape or form. Single 8800 GTX provided more than playable experience, so it's not that big of a deal. But somewhere here line ends for 8800 GTXs, as they lack DirectX 11 support, and more modern titles couldn't work on them. So to see how well the rest of the system stands the test of time, we proceeded with using GTX 750. Doom from 2016 is an amazingly optimized game, and it ran well on our setup. Witcher 3 was almost playable, others didn't fare that well. We also ran various versions of 3 d Mark synthetic benchmarks. And here are the results. It stayed relevant for at least 7 long years, our build didn't warrant the ridiculous cost. Graphic cards stayed relevant until new version of DirectX and shader models popped out. SLI setup seems like a champion of diminishing returns and gives no benefit to builds test of time. But the biggest loser seemed to be our CPU, it had lower clock while single core still reigned. While its 4 cores had some benefit at later point, its wonky old architecture and low IPC kept it from being relevant. We could have overclocked it and could get quite some gains there, but that still wouldn't make it future proof. With build like this, you are fine somewhere up to 2013, which is no slouch, but could also be achieved with much cheaper machine half a year later. Anyway, I'm really glad I finally managed to build it. Let me stress one more time that our results are with our hardware and they might be inaccurate, so take them with a grain of salt. This video was almost two years in the making, as we couldn't manage the time to finish it, and I'm relieved that it's finally complete. 
There should be more projects like this one, but who knows when and in what form. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you around.